respected viewers we are once again welcoming all of you in our learning for knowledge youtube channel today's topic for the video is the types of cooling tower based on air flow that is whether air flow counter to the water or cross crossing to the water and then further it can be divided into three other types that is natural induced and forced draft we will describe the characteristic of these types types of tower in this video so move towards the video already described in our previous video that cooling water in open recirculating system is based on evaporative principle now when water cooled in towers operates on the evaporative principle which are a combination of several heat mass transfer processes the most important of these is the transfer of liquid into vapor or air mixture now in convective transfers when convective heat transfer occurs as a result of the difference in temperature between the water and the surrounding air then both of these processes take place at the interface of the water surface and the air that is convective heat transfer and the transfer of liquid into vapor to vapor air mixture these processes basically occurring at the surface water surface and where water surface types of cooling tower based on air flow two major categories of cooling tower based on air flows are counter flow and secondly cross flow now in counter flow in this type of tower air moves vertically upward through the fills counter to the downward falling of the water now the water is coming downside from these lures these fills and then air is now coming from this side and move upward now air moves counter to the hot water and then when this hot water interacts or in contact with the air it cools and then we can collect this water in the basin and then recirculate in the system so this is a schematic or basic diagram of counter flow Uh, cooling system this is an other aspect of this uh, counter flow air coming in and water is coming from the top side both crosses each other and move counter to each other and then water cold water after in contacting by the air collects in the basin and this air goes out from the top of the tower this is counter flow second type is cross flow now as it is obvious from its name in cross flow towers have a fill configuration through which air flows horizontally across the downward fall of water so air which is coming inside from both side or one side now enter in these lures and then water which is falling from the top passes through this and air is moving horizontally and water is coming perpendicular to the air and after intermixing and cooling of the water this air come here and then it moves upward so in this way water is coming perpendicular to the air that's why it is called cross flow or you can say air is moving horizontally and water is coming vertically vertically so this is called cross flow tower this is an other aspect of this cross flow tower where air is coming in entering from this side and water is coming from the top and instead of water going up air going upward it passes through these lures and then go uh, outside from this tower in where there is no water and water is coming down and then collected in the basin after cooling this is cross flow pattern now cross flow design or air there are three types further we can we can classify this cross flow pattern in three types one is induced draft natural draft and forced draft 
similarly uh, you can uh, say that induced draft in which we will induce air by using some of the equipment or force draft where we force the air inside the tower and natural draft in which air is moving inside the tower on the basis of uh, without assisting any of the mechanical equipment that is naturally. So these are some basic diagrams of cross flow. So this is natural draft in which air enters from the bottom and water is coming from that side from the top and then without any assistance air moves into the tower and exit at the top of the tower. Another is forced draft cross flow. So we will install a blower or a fan and then it will suck the air from one side and force the air to move inside the tower and interact or passes through the water and, and then it, air become he, heated and water become cold. There are other single sided that is air is entering in this one sided and then cross flow where there is a fan installed on the top of this tower. You can see in this picture here this is a fan and air is coming from both sides and then water is coming from the top and then they interact water is perpendicular to the uh, incoming air and then at the end this fan assists the uh, movement of air so that this is induced draft cross flow cooling towers. Now similarly in counter flow similarly three types induced draft, forced draft and natural draft. So these are typical diagrams of natural draft, induced draft and then forced draft. Here this is the blower which uh, forced air to go inside the tower. Here the fan is located at the top of the air and there is no mechanical equipment installed in natural draft. Now we will explain one by one all these types. Natural draft tower. In this type of tower, air flow through the tower is achieved without any mechanical means such as fans and air flows through the tower is produced through the differential density between the heated air which is present inside the tower and it is less dense and relatively cold ambient air which is present outside the tower. So inside the tower when air takes the heat from the coming hot water it become hotter and become less dense due to its less density it move upward and it create a draft now the air present outside which is more cool as compared to air present inside or more dense so it will create a cycle and it will move inside to fill the space because the hot air is moving upward and then the air present outside it will move inside and then it become hot it will leave the tower from the top in this way due to basic principle is difference present in the density of the air present inside the tower which is hotter and the air present outside which is cooler on the basis of differential density this natural draft tower operates and now fitting the tower with spray nozzle which create more mixing of air and water droplets and improve the evaporation efficiency produces increased water cooling rates. So because when we fit some spray nozzle water is spray from the top and whether it's cross flow or counter flow air interacts with this and more surface area is available to interact the hot water with the air and take more heat from the water and air moves out from the top side. So large, usually large utility power plants use these large natural draft cooling tower and these are also called as hyperbolic cooling tower due to their hyperbolic shape. So these are this is the example these pictures show that these are the natural draft now air is entered from this bottom you can see this these windows in this picture from where air enters in this tower 
an exit at the top this is hyperbolic cooling tower you can see or natural draft second type which is forced draft tower now the term forced draft denotes that air is forced or blown inside the tower using one or more fans or blower fans also provide a means of regulating air flow because when we force the air to go inside and then if the blower or fan push the air uh, upward because more it is sucking more air from the outside so fan also provides the mean of regulating air flow to compensate for changing atmospheric and load conditions by fan cap fan capacity manipulation and or cycling that is we can also control or regulate the air flow by adjusting the speed of blower or fan depending upon the atmospheric condition that is if there is a more cold we can reduce the speed because now heating more cold air is coming and taking the heat more easily or you can say if we have a more load in our on our system we can increase the speed of the fan and it will force more air to enter inside the tower and drift eliminator are installed to prevent water entrain in the air from leaving the system these drift eliminator basically stop the water droplets which are in entrained or entered in the wire water they will stop leaving the water droplets and thus reducing the drift losses in these type of towers air entrance velocity is high compared with the exit because at the entrance of the air the blower or fan is fixed which increase the velocity of the air entering in the tower however there is no force or no fan or assisted mechanical thing are installed on this therefore <coughs> velocity exit velocity is low as compared to entrance velocity now due to this a uh, high entrance velocity these tower are susceptible to recirculation and considered to have less performance stability than the induced draft because when <coughs> fan installed at the entrance of the tower force or suck the air with high velocity then the air which is which exit the tower at the top now due to force present in outer side there is a chance that the air which exit the tower from the top can be mix and then come again and recirculate in the tower so therefore these type of uh, towers normally installed at specially designed places which can provide significant separation between intake and discharge location to minimize recirculation so we have to consider that the intake of the this tower must be properly separated and there are less chance that the exit air come again and recirculate in this tower so force draft force draft tower are equipped with a centrifugal blower type fan which use more energy than propeller type fan this is an other drawback of this type of tower so this is a picture you can say here there is a air intake blower or fan is installed and then there is a water spray air is coming from this side this is a cut view cut view of this now water is spraying from the top air is moving in this direction and so after interacting with this water and taking heat from the water this air go out from the top and the cold water is collected at the basin this is force draft counter flow now we come to our induced draft tower the term induced draft tower denotes that air is drawn by fans through the flow of flowing water and up and out of the cooling tower basically fans are present located at the top of the tower and then it will suck the air now water is falling from the top and now air is moving up due to the induced force applied to the fans now air flow can be drawn either cross flow or counter flow with respect to the orientation of the falling water 
and which results in in the cooling of the water drift eliminator are also installed to avoid drift losses in these types of tower air exit velocity is 3 to 4 times higher compared with the entrance velocity so there is a less there is no chance that recirculation took place in, in these types of water and there is no proper separation of in and out are important in these types of tower so these types of tower ranging from small as 15 gallon per minute to as large as 700000 gallon per minute or you can say 0.7 million gallon per minute of per minute of flow or uh, of this uh, tower can be made these are a wide range uh, are wide range in these types of tower and extensively used these types of tower and they also use less energy due to installation of uh, fans as compared to blower and there is a they are more efficient as compared to four drop tower if they are not properly installed and not separated their exit and entrance points this is the cut view of this type of tower where <coughs> air is coming inside and water from the top and then here this is a fan at the top this is a motor for the fan and now this fan forces air to force air to come here and then go out from this tower and then water is cool whether it is counter flow or cross flow so this is the a cut side view of the this type of induced type of uh, cooling tower so these are basically three different types induced natural and forced draft in each type of air flow so basically cooling tower originally based on counter or counter flow or cross flow and then subdivided depending upon the requirement of the system maybe if there are big large utility then it prefer uh, natural draft or if <coughs> and other circumstances took place then we have induced draft which have a wide range of use and then forced draft this is some special type of arrangements are required in the forced type so <coughs> these the, in this video we will try to explain the basics of the uh, cooling tower classifications these are some references which we used to get the information uh, and make to make this uh, video useful for all our viewers thank you very much and in the next video we will further explain the different terminologies or different aspects of the cooling tower so see you in the next video